part of this video, we're going to uh, show you what's inside the Andromeda Research Labs Automotive Locksmith Kit Number One. If you would uh, purchase this product, we're going to show you the items that are included in the kit. Um, and uh, let's just start by opening the box. So if you bought the this item from a distributor, this was the box that it would come in. We've already removed the packing material, so we're not going to have noodles all over the demonstration area. But there's what is inside. This is your AR programming unit. I'm going to set things aside here as we take them out of the box. Uh, these are the connection options that come with the kit. This, uh, all of our connection options and adapters are in plastic cases, so it helps you stay organized. Um, this is the end circuit adapter and also the uh, clip which allows you to connect to the 8 pin double EEPROMs. Uh, Automotive Blacksmith Kit 1 supports just the 8 pin double EEPROMs found in ECUs and mobilizers and other vehicle modules. Anyway, if you open this up, here is the clip and all of our connection options, the clip, the probes, everything else that we offer to connect to parts, have this black plug on uh, the end which connects to the adapter. Um, and in this case we've got the typical and traditional um, Pomona clip. So we'll set that aside. This is the in-circuit adapter, specifically designed to program parts in-circuit. We'll put its box over here. Um, the in-circuit adapter, as um, you can see, it's got uh, three individual headers. The headers are for the three different families of the 8-pin double E proms, the 93 series, the 25, 95 series, and the 24 series. It also has uh, two switches which set the programming voltages for insert at work and this dip switch allows you to set options. The software that comes with the kit explains how and shows you how to set up the kit specific uh, for the device with which you're working. Alright, this is the, uh, the standard probe set as opposed to our optional precision probe set. Standard probe set once again has a black plug which connects to um, the, in this case, the header on the the end circuit adapter, um, like this. Basically, you just put the the plug right over the top of the header and that's how you attach the probe set, the standard Pomona clip, you have the optional AccuTouch probe, the precision probe set, the dip clip, all of the options that we have which allow you to connect to the uh, individual components that are on the um, the modules that you'll encounter when you're doing your work. The reason that um, we use colored cables as opposed to just a gray cable is because there's an industry standard color code, um, the Electronic Industry Association the EIA color code, where each color represents a number. So uh, those numbers are used for everything from, or the colors are used for everything from identifying uh, resistor values, capacitor values, uh, and they're just numbers that reference specific colors, um, where black is zero. Brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four, green is five, blue is six, violet or purple is seven, gray is eight, and white would be nine. So each color uh, identifies a specific number. So why is that important? Well, it's because if you're connecting to an 8-pin double EEPROM, in this case, the probe colors match the pins on the part. So pin number one would be brown, pin number two would be red, and so forth until you get to pin number eight, which would be gray. 
So it's a convenience and it allows you to um, identify which probe would connect to which pin. The probes, in this case, you would use them for, um, although they'll connect the standard surface mount parts, you can also use them to connect to the larger dip component like you'll find in a, a Toyota Sequoia. So um, we try to make your your life a little easier by providing you with uh, a mechanism by which you can determine which probe goes to which pin. And the other thing is, since we have colored wires and on our in-circuit adapter, these headers are not keyed. Um, you can see here, it says serial EEPROM -E -E in-circuit interface, attach cable connection with brown wire at pin one position right. Okay, and then down at each header, it says brown is pin one, pin one, pin one. So when you put the plug on, you wanna be sure that the brown wire is not on the left, which means that this would be turned around and you would put it on as I showed you before, although this is a little bit better close up, um, with the brown wire on the right hand side. So that's another reason that we use the colored cable is that it allows you to uh, determine which direction the plug goes onto the header. We try to make it clear with the writing that's on the, or the hook screening that's on the adapter itself. However, sometimes people turn it around. If you turn it around, it does not hurt anything. It just doesn't work. So that is that. The insert adapter, your standard probe set, your service mount clip and the last item in the box is the uh, resynchronization block for reflashing after you reflash a Toyota or a Lexus with a small black box immobilizer you have to resynchronize the immobilizer to the ECU um, and that is done by putting the resynchronization block on the, the OBD port or the diagnostic port of the car and you wait 30 minutes and then the ECU and the uh, reflashed immobilizer are resynchronized. Um, also, take the resynchronization block out, put it in here. You get the uh, red and black Honda keys. If you're doing a Honda or an Acura, which has the uh, red and black key system. These keys are synchronized to the reflash file which comes with the uh, automotive locksmith kit. And in the bottom of the box we have instructions which in this case give you the contents, tells you what to do, and as well, all of our products, we try to provide you with as much information as possible so that, you know, you're not left wondering what the heck to do. Okay, we'll put the keys back in. And the resynchronization block back in. And once again, you get a nice box to keep all the pieces together. Now, the second item that uh, we want to show you is um, the documentation that you get with your your kit. Um, one of the things that Andromeda Research strives to do is to provide you with documentation about everything that we sell. If you buy from us, we hope you're not disappointed in the amount of documentation. If you buy something from uh, a country that might happen to be located on the other side of the globe, uh, you're lucky if you get any documentation. Basically, it's uh, good luck. Here's your rice paper and your CD. Uh, you're going to get a CD. But we don't do that. I'm going to take out the bubble wrap here. And I'm going to take the documentation. It's always in the bottom of the box. Take the documentation out. Here's your software CD. And I'm going to set the box aside so we're not dealing with the, the box. Now, I'm going to start with the CD. Um, this is a business card size CD. 
uh, you can run our software directly off of the CD or you can install it on whatever host computer system that you find that is compatible with our, our product. Uh, w one reason that we use a little CD and not a big CD is that you can put the CD inside the programmer and keep it there if you so choose to do that. That's why it's, uh, it's done. So um, this is how we distribute our software. You can also get it from our website. Uh, it's free. So in the future, if you want to um, get the latest version, this happens to be uh, version 6.0H, you can do that simply by going to our website and downloading it. Now, I'm going to go through each piece of documentation that comes with the kit so you can see what you get. This is the document that describes the using the KLS Automotive Locksmith Kit. Um, first section, Understanding Vehicle Immobilizers, ECUs, Reflashing, and EEPROM work, where we tell you what these things are and what they do and uh, basically explain that to you. Then we have a what's included in the kit, which is basically what I'm showing you here. Um, and then we dive into working with 8-pin zero double EEPROMs, and we have pictures of the different families of the double EEPROMs uh, that are at the bottom of the first page. Then on the second page, um, <clears throat> we cover attaching the clip or probes to the part, um, how to maximize the life of your clip, um, what to do, uh, how to identify pin number one, and then we talk about locksmith kit documentation, and we have a uh, some an illustration here that describes how the um, locksmith librarian works. Because in addition to the other things that you can do with the locksmith kit, reflashing is one of them. So this illustration shows how to do the reflash. We basically walk you through it here. Um, we talk about the different entries in the locksmith librarian, which the librarian will, will cover in another video, but it's a software feature that we provide. Um, we have entries in the librarian, such as before you start, which tells you what to do before you begin, and then after you're done with your reflash, we have one called you are done. And then we also have a little extra piece down here called how to save and how to program. This document is to assist you in locating and identifying uh, zero double E proms and Motorola microcontrollers. Motorola microcontrollers are another technology family that are uh, supported in locksmith kit number two. Locksmith kit number two does everything locksmith kit number one does, but it adds support for Motorola microcontrollers. And we're not going to cover that in this video, but it's just one more adapter. And you can always upgrade kit number one, kit number two in the future if you want, just by buying the uh, optional communication adapter for the Motorola microcontrollers. Anyway, um, on this document you can see we have an introduction, we have serial EEPROM package types, and we walk through each one, give you an example with a picture, show you them soldered to a circuit, and then we show you the different connection options that we have available to attach to those parts. We discuss families and part numbers, so you'll understand where the part numbers come from and what those mean. And then we go through each family specifically and address uh, basically a little bit of history and how you um, can identify the part. So we have the 93XX family. And then on the second page, we have the 2595 family, which is SPI. And then we have the 24XX I squared C family. So the goal of this document is with the gazillions of modules that are in all the, the different vehicles, the thing that's standard are the kinds of memory chips that you'll find. And the reason this document was created was so that when you opened a module and looked inside, you would be able to locate the part. And it's not just, I mean, this, this video is to address uh, the, the locksmith community, but the same holds true whether you're working with an immobilizer, an ECU, digital cluster, airbag, the memory technology that's in those modules is, uh, is pretty much the same. And this document will explain to you how to lo locate those parts. And the last page of the document covers out-of-family parts, basically odd parts, parts which appear to be double E problems but are not. 
Um, and then we cover the Motorola microcontrollers, the different packages, and how to identify those. So this, like I said, our goal is to, pro to provide you with an educational experience. There's no reason to sell you a product if we don't teach you how to use it. So this document is intended to assist and aid in that. So we want to put as much knowledge into your head as possible so when you encounter a module and you're looking for the memory part, you'll know what you're looking for. All right, the next document that's included with your package is using the ASER SM1A, which is how you say it. It doesn't have another name. It's the ASER SM1A Serial EEPROM In-Circuit Interface Adapter. That's what it's called. And this document explains um, how to use that adapter. It covers uh, installing the adapter here. Um, it, we have, again, di uh, diagrams of the, of the serial double EEPROM parts here. Um, we have connecting the cable assembly to the serial ASR SM1A adapter, which is basically putting the plug on the right header, um, which our software, which is not going to be shown in this video, shows you how to set everything up. We never leave you going, how do I do it? So, and again, uh, this sentence right here says, brown wire pin one is on the right. Um, and then you attach the plug based on which family of part you're working with. Then we talk about setting the operating voltage, the key to end circuit programming. All right, you want to read this because it explains how to use the end circuit adapter for successful end circuit programming. We address a lot of the issues and you know, the myths of what you can do in circuit. So, um, strongly suggest that you, uh, you read this and uh, it will assist you in, you know, almost 100% success in reading parts, programming parts in circuit. Um, we talk about the voltage selection switches, which are on the adapter. Then the second page, how to confirm successful and valid serial EEPROM data access. Uh, that's what this paragraph discusses. And then we discuss the adapter dip switch, additional device families, device pin connections, and cable color code. And finally, we have one that you won't care about called connecting a PIC microcontroller because the PIC microcontroller programs in a way where we can use the same in-circuit adapter that d supports the serial double EEPROMs to program PIC microcontrollers. So it's included on this document. Then we come to the thing that nobody else provides. This is our Serial EEPROM tutorial. The Serial EEPROM tutorial, the goal of, of this document, and it's not a small document, is to train you with hands-on and hands-on exercises and, and uh, you'll actually use a, an 8-pin Serial double EEPROM, which is right here. That's an, an actual 93C56 serial EEPROM attached to the tutorial. This is the same part that you'll find in a Toyota or Lexus um, ECU. So we chose this part simply because it's one that you will encounter in you know much of your work. And by using this part and providing this document, we teach you how to use the system. Basically, you will attach to this component with the clip, and then you'll go through and do exercises. And we walk you through everything. Getting started, main screen and switch settings, about the buffer. People see this, they don't really know what it is. Well, after you do this uh, training tutorial, you'll know. We talk about why this exists, what the, all the data means, and we walk you through specifically pressing the keys on the keyboard with our product so that you're um, fully aware of how the, the system works. You won't have to wonder um, what you're doing after you do the tutorial. Basically, it's, it's a training document. I'm just going to go through all the pages here real quick so you know what you're going to get. So that's page one, which is the getting started. Then we go through exercises, changing data, entry base, what is hex, what does it mean? Uh, we walk you through, if you don't know about um, 
Hex. If you don't know about binary and you've always been a little bit leery about learning about it, well, there's no better way to learn about it than to sit down and uh, do some exercises and do it. You're not going to hurt anything with our product. Just do the exercises. You'll see things happen on the screen and we explain what you're seeing on the screen and why it exists. And as I said, we talk about binary, we talk about hex, we talk about ASCII, and we give a little bit of history about, you know, why some of the stuff exists, where it came from. Um, on this page, we have ASCII, a brief history lesson. And then we have the ASCII block, basically, you know, what is this block on the side where you're, and most programmers that you'll see, you'll, you'll see this arrangement here where you have data on the left and then you'll have this ad, this block on the right and we explain what that block is and uh, how it came to be. Then um, you go through and you do uh, everything that's, that's uh, on the, the tutorial um, and then we show you specific commands. Um, as I said, the goal of this is to, to train you so that you are comfortable using the system. Uh, we have the quick view command, the get validated command, which is a, really was added to our software once we came out with the AccuTouch probe. Because one of the things that you do when you read a part in circuit is you want to confirm that you're connected and you want to confirm that you're getting a good read. So you, uh, in the case of the AccuTouch probe, you push the probe over the top of the part. You don't even have to clean it most of the time. You hit the G command once you're in the buffer editor. It will read the data, it will compare the data, and it'll pop up in green and say, the part and buffer match. If it's green, it's good. So that allows you to, to just read a part or program a part very quickly without, as I said, necessarily cleaning it. The probe uh, will most of the time penetrate the sealant, humidity sealant that's on the part. So that's the command G. Then we do programming, a program exercise. We have a command called the write command which allows you to write data from anywhere in the buffer to anywhere in the part. And then we have a section on working with files because sometimes there's some confusion about how to do file operations with our products. We walk you through an example of that. Then we have a save buffer to disk file um, example, programming from a disk file. Then we move on to vehicle specific exercises. Okay, the reason, the, the first half of the tutorial teaches you how to use the product. Commands, connections, and those those kinds of things. The second half of the tutorial is specifically dedicated to exercises, vehicle oriented exercises. Now these are not just locksmith exercises, they're vehicle module exercises. Um, we talk about automotive exercises and the librarian. Um, then we move on to the actual exercises themselves. The first one we do is a digital cluster exercise, digital cluster replacement. Um, and we actually have data. The data that's in the double E problem that's attached to this tutorial was extracted from uh, vehicle modules themselves. The digital cluster, we pull the data out and we put in uh, mileage, we put in VIN number, because the whole point of this, as I said, is to, to train you. No point in you buying a product and then the manufacturer says, good luck, I hope you figure it out. Uh, second example is a VIN number exercise. Um, this is where you will go in and find a VIN, edit the VIN, program the VIN. Then we have an immobilizer pin number extraction exercise. Uh, I believe this one is from an Azuzu. But anyway, we show you how to pull the data and uh, identify the pin number. Then we have um, using the system librarian. Uh, we also have uh, in this example four copy data from one ECU to another. So if you have a defective ECU, how to take the data from the defective ECU, program it into one that's been removed from a, a salvage vehicle. And we have, there's an airbag exercise. I know you're locksmiths. You don't care about airbags, but there are people that purchase our product that do, and this this tutorial covers both the automo covers a variety of automotive um, operations, and the airbag clearing is uh, is one of them. So you can skip it, but it's not that long, and it explains how to clear the crash data from an airbag. Then we have one called using the locksmith librarian to reflash vehicle immobilizers. 
this example uh, does just that. It basically shows you the reflash capability of the, um, the of the package. So we have a specific um, list of of uh, exercises that uh, or steps that you'll perform uh, based on. Um, in this case, we use a, a forerunner 1998 to 2001, and walk you through how to uh, reflash that that particular mobilizer. Okay, that is the uh, the training tutorial, and this comes with every kit. And if you do it, our goal is to make you a, a EE Prom expert. And as I said, what's the point of you buying something to, you know, use to make money for yourself and your and your business if the manufacturer doesn't teach you how to use it? So that's why we include this. The last item, last individual piece of paper, is the Andromeda Research, uh, the programming software instruction sheet. Now, what this is, uh, because sometimes people have questions about specifically what do they need to do in order to accomplish a task. This, um, we, we did this sheet so that you can literally cut it out if you want, you don't have to, and install it in the lid of the programmer. Just stick it in the lid of the programmer. And if you do that, it looks like this. So the instructions are right there when you open the lid. There they are. And all you have to do is locate what it is that you want to do and follow the, the specific instructions. Okay, the last item that's included with <coughs> any kit that we sell is the actual EEPROM Plus programming system manual. If you Even if you didn't buy an automotive kit, if you just bought a programmer and you weren't doing any locksmith or automotive work, um, if you were just using our product for video game um, reconditioning or some other application involving memory parts, you would get this book. Um, nobody provides a manual anymore with their products, but we do. And the reason that we do is because we feel it's important that if you buy um, a product that you have some document that will explain the ins and outs and how things work and uh, that's what this 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 document is for. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the individual pages, but basically um, it's a user manual. And if you want to know specifically how to do a command, that's in here. Um, if you want to know, you know, how to uh, use a specific function in the buffer editor, it's in here. And lastly, the thing that we provide, which nobody provides anymore, um, in our appendix, and we have a section on how to configure your host, set up your host machine, but we also give you troubleshooting hints and engineering diagrams. If you would like to uh, work on your programmer yourself, we give you schematic diagrams as well. So that's it. That's what you get if you, the, the pieces and the documentation that's included in this case with the automotive locksmith kit. But a lot of the things that I've shown um, are also uh, included with, uh, if you were just to buy the programmer by itself or uh, one of our other products. We do not um, skimp on documentation. So that wraps up this video. And if you have any questions or would like to talk to us, or would like to send us an email. Um, the ability and the uh, information to accomplish that is on our website, which is arlabs.com. Thank you very much for watching.